Welcome to the online course on negotiating regional trade agreements for trade in times of crisis and pandemic. My name is Katrin Kuhlman. I'm a visiting professor of law at Georgetown University Law Center and the president and founder of the New Markets Lab, a law and development center. This is module five on sanitary and phytosanitary measures and technical barriers to trade. As noted during an earlier module, SPS and TBT measures have been particularly common during the COVID-19 pandemic. In some cases, these measures restricted trade. In others, they facilitated it. However, in many cases, governments took these measures to protect human life and health and ensure the safety of traded goods. Measures exacerbating trade frictions have included restrictions on medical products and temporary restrictions on the importation of live animal products from regions with a risk of contamination. For example, Russia took temporary import restrictions on exotic and decorative animals and live fish from China. Measures easing trade frictions have included relaxations in technical regulations or recognition of accreditations by regulators of other governments that allowed for trade in essential goods and medical supplies, despite disruptions in global supply chains. For example, in the United States, the FDA issued emergency use authorizations, or EUAs, allowing for the importation of medical goods, including PPE and face masks, from manufacturers who had not previously met U.S. standards. At the same time, however, measures were put in place to ensure consumer protection. COVID-19 has exposed challenges in the application of SPS and TBT rules during a public health crisis that will have resonance for years to come. Some of these related to the challenge of proportionality. So ad hoc restrictive measures compounded trade costs that already existed prior to the pandemic due to the heterogeneity of specific regulatory standards adopted by different governments. Here, trade frictions led to the inefficient movement of essential goods, and it's important to consider whether the measures taken are proportional to the challenge. The second set of challenges arises from compatibility. Disruptions in established value chains have highlighted issues with the compatibility of SPS and TBT measures with respect to essential goods. The legal foundations for SPS and TBT measures in regional trade agreements flow from the WTO agreements on SPS and TBT. For SPS, members are allowed, of course, to take measures to protect human, animal, or plant life or health, but these rights are subject to certain conditions. The SPS measure must be applied only to the extent necessary, must not be maintained without sufficient scientific evidence, should not arbitrarily or unjustifiably discriminate, and should not be applied in a manner that would constitute a disguised restriction on international trade. Harmonization is part of the SPS agreement, and members shall base measures on international standards, guidelines, and recommendations to achieve harmonization on as wide a basis as possible. WTO members shall also accept SPS measures of other members as equivalent, so long as the exporting member objectively demonstrates to the importing member that its measures achieve the importing member's appropriate level of SPS protection. WTO members are required to undertake appropriate risk assessment based on scientific evidence, and they are required to notify and provide information on SPS measures in accordance with Annex B of the SPS agreement. Special and differential treatment also applies in the form of a phased implementation and some exceptions. For the TBT agreement, which applies to technical regulations, standards, and conformity assessment procedures, national treatment and most favored nation treatment apply, and WTO members should treat other members' imports no less favorably than like products produced domestically or in another member country. Members should also not create unnecessary obstacles to trade, and measures should not be more trade restrictive than necessary to fulfill a legitimate public policy objective. WTO members shall also base their TBT measures on international standards and should give positive consideration to accepting as equivalent technical regulations of another member, even if they differ, provided that they adequately satisfy objectives of their own regulations. Transparency, again, features in the TBT agreement with provisions on publication of information, establishment of inquiry points, and notification procedures. It's notable that more flexible standards do apply 
where urgent problems of safety, health, environmental protection, or national security arise. And finally, for TBT, special and differential treatment also applies and relates to assistance on matters related to the preparation of technical regulations and the conduct of conformity assessments. RTA provisions on SPS and TBT tend to follow the provisions that I've just outlined. And in many cases, SPS and TBT chapters of RTAs begin by affirming the contracting party's rights and obligations under the WTO covered agreements. So the approaches here relate to both affirming multilateral commitments as a whole or picking and choosing certain multilateral commitments for incorporation. For example, the SPS chapter of the USMCA affirms the rights and obligations under the SPS agreement. And then the chapter provides additional guidance with respect to risk assessment and compatibility of SPS measures. The TBT chapter of the USMCA adopts a different approach. Instead of affirming the rights and obligations under the TBT agreement, the USMCA here enumerates and incorporates specific provisions of the TBT agreement. The chapter also contains more detailed rules going beyond the purview of disciplines contained in the TBT agreement. The majority of RTAs signed by Asia-Pacific economies between 2009 and 2018 referenced the SPS agreement and TBT agreement and their respective chapters. Many RTAs do include additional commitments beyond the WTO disciplines. Sometimes clarifying specifics pertaining to the implementation of SPS and TBT obligations in the WTO agreements. So the chapter in the handbook on SPS and TBT focuses on two categories of measures. One measures related to the proportionality of adopted SPS and TBT measures and two provisions ensuring compatibility with SPS and TBT measures. Risk assessment is central to the proportionality of SPS measures. In terms of SPS measures to protect human, animal, or plant health or safety before such measures are adopted and applied, if international standards do not exist, an adequate risk assessment must be carried out to ensure that the measure is tailored to the risk being targeted and that the need for protection is balanced against any negative trade effects. RTAs should and do follow this standard. Here the baseline option is taken from the SPS agreement and requires that SPS measures adopted by WTO members are based on a risk assessment considering available scientific evidence and relevant economic factors. The baseline plus option is taken from the RCEP and notes that notwithstanding emergency measures, contracting parties are disallowed from stopping the importation of goods during the period during which a risk assessment is taking place, provided that the good in question was previously allowed to be imported. The baseline option taken from the SPS agreement can be seen in the box at the bottom of the slide. Another central aspect of proportionality is ensuring that adopted SPS or TBT measures are not more trade restrictive than necessary or create unnecessary obstacles to international trade. RTAs should and do incorporate rules that focus on this aspect of proportional response. Here the baseline option again taken from the SPS agreement and the TBT agreement in turn. In the SPS agreement, WTO members are required to take into account the objective of minimizing negative trade effects when determining the appropriate level of SPS prediction and ensuring that the SPS measures are not more trade restrictive than necessary. A baseline plus option can be seen in the CPTPP, which obliges contracting parties to consider and select the SPS measure that is not more trade restrictive than necessary to achieve the appropriate level of SPS protection. A baseline plus similarly can be seen in the TBT agreement, which requires WTO members to ensure that technical regulations do not create unnecessary obstacles to trade or are more trade restrictive than necessary to fulfill a legitimate objective. And a baseline plus option on TBT can be seen in the EU Vietnam RTA, which calls on contracting parties to assess both regulatory and non-regulatory alternatives to a proposed technical regulation or mandatory measure. This slide provides a bit more detail on the baseline plus options discussed in the previous slide. For SPS measures, the baseline plus is taken from the CPTPP with additional sample draft language added in italics. And this 
calls for when establishing or maintaining sanitary or phytosanitary measures to achieve the appropriate level of sanitary or phytosanitary protection, each party shall consider measures that are not more trade restrictive and select a measure that is not more trade restrictive than required to achieve the sanitary or phytosanitary objective, taking into account technical and economic feasibility. For TPP, the baseline plus option is taken from the EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement and calls for best use of good regulatory practices as provided for in the TBT agreement and the relevant chapter in the trade agreement by assessing the available regulatory and non-regulatory alternatives to a proposed technical regulation that would fulfill the party's legitimate objectives. Harmonization of SPS and TBT measures with international standards is an important component of both the WTO, SPS, and TBT agreements and regional trade agreements. And here, RTAs should incorporate binding provisions on harmonization, which can be tailored to crisis situations, as the examples here and in the next slide will note. The baseline option on harmonization is taken from the WTO SPS agreement, which requires WTO members to base their SPS measures on international standards, guidelines, and recommendations to achieve harmonization on as wide a basis as possible. The baseline plus option for SPS is adapted from the SPS agreement and tailored to crisis situations. This will be shown in the next slide. There's also a discretionary option on SPS highlighted in the handbook taken from the Japan Mongolia EPA, which includes best endeavored language on cooperation to achieve harmonization of SPS measures but contains a carve-out allowing countries to retain different levels of SPS protection. This carve-out is why this is noted as a discretionary option. For TBT, the baseline option is taken from the TBT Agreement Article 2.4 that requires WTO members to ensure that technical regulations are based on relevant international standards if they exist or if their completion is imminent. The baseline plus option noted in the handbook is also included in the next slide. It's taken from the China South Korea FTA and clarifies the scope of the harmonization rule by specifying a non exhaustive list of international organizations on whose standards the relevant technical regulations may be based. Here are the baseline plus options for SPS and TBT. On SPS, the baseline plus option, again adapted from the WTO SPS agreement and tailored with sample draft language, which is included here in italics, notes to harmonize sanitary and phytosanitary measures on as wide a basis as possible, the parties shall base their sanitary or phytosanitary measures on international standards, guidelines, or recommendations where they exist, including standards and technical guidance developed by relevant international organizations during a crisis or emergency situation. The baseline plus option for TBT is taken from the China-South Korea Free Trade Agreement and notes that in determining whether an international standard in the sense of Article 2.4 of the TBT Agreement exists, each party shall consider the decision of the WTO Committee on Technical Barriers to Trade. Such international standards shall include, but are not limited to, those developed by the international organization for standardization, the International Electrotechnical Commission, the International Telecommunication Union, and the Codex Elementarius Commission. Provisions focused on equivalence in SPS and TBT measures are also particularly important in times of crisis. Here, RTA options focus on binding provisions to, on equivalence to recognize differing measures as equivalent to or equally valid as domestic regulations. The recognition of equivalence of differing measures and regulations that provide the same level of SPS or TBT protection or are in furtherance of the same policy goal is especially helpful during times of crisis and emergency and can lead to more resilient supply chains that can respond adequately to supply and demand shocks. The handbook covers several different options in this case. The baseline option on SPS is taken from the SPS Agreement Article 4.1 which requires WTO members to accept another member's differing SPS measures as equivalent if it is objectively demonstrated that the differing measure achieves the importing member's appropriate level of SPS protection.
the baseline plus option on SPS is taken from the Chile Indonesia SIPA, Article 6.7, which gives contracting parties the option to request for the recognition of equivalence of specified SPS measures. The baseline option on TBT is taken from the TBT Agreement Article 2.7, which requires WTO members to give positive consideration to accepting another member's differing technical regulations as equivalent as long as they adequately fulfill the objectives of the importing member's regulations. Baseline plus option A on TBT is taken from the EU-Japan EPA and provides that contracting parties have the option to request the recognition of equivalence of differing technical regulations. And finally, baseline plus option B on TBT is sample draft language that recognizes the equivalence of differing standards if developed by a contracting party belonging to or accredited by an international forum or organization. This slide includes some of the language from the provisions discussed in the previous slide. The baseline option for SPS measures on equivalence is noted here, and I'll focus instead on the sample provision for TBT measures that's taken from sample draft language, so it does not yet appear in a regional trade agreement, but could be considered in order to respond to situations dealing with crisis or pandemic. The language notes that a party shall give positive consideration to accepting technical regulations of another party as equivalent, even if they differ, provided that A, the other party's technical regulations adequately fulfill the objective of its own technical regulations, or the technical regulations are developed by a designated authority that is accredited by and or regulated under a relevant international regulatory body. For medical devices, here, the language explicitly recognizes the IMDRF, the International Medical Device Regulators Forum, as the relevant international regulatory body. Finally, mutual recognition is another important tool for allowing compatibility of different measures by accepting their validity and allowing imports from producers who comply with the exporting country's regulations. RTA options here tend to focus on mutual recognition of conformity assessment procedures. The baseline option noted is taken from the WTO TBT agreement and incorporates non-binding language on mutual recognition of the results of conformity assessment procedures conducted by other WTO members. The baseline plus option noted here and included in its entirety in the box below is taken from the New Zealand Singapore MRA and incorporates binding language on mutual recognition of the results of conformity assessment procedures conducted by the other contracting party. The SPS and TBT agreements also include transparency provisions, which contribute to greater awareness during crisis situations. Some RTAs go beyond this to innovate further in the area of non-tariff measures, in particular ways in which to address non-tariff barriers or NTMs that are acting as a barrier to trade. One such innovation can be found in African trade agreements, such as the EAC agreement and the AFCFTA which establish a platform for reporting and addressing non-tariff barriers. These can include SPS and TBT measures, as well as NTBs in areas like customs and trade facilitation. The baseline option below from the SPS Agreement Article 7 stipulates that notification of SPS measures shall be done in accordance with Annex B of the SPS Agreement, which sets out provisions on notification and non-discrimination and also provides some flexibility in the case of urgent problems of health protection, which is particularly relevant in the context of the pandemic. The baseline plus option below, taken from the AFCFTA, establishes the NTB reporting, monitoring, and eliminating mechanism. This slide shows the actual provisions discussed in the previous slide on options to address transparency and SPS and TBT measures and reporting of non-tariff barriers. The baseline option here is taken from the WTO SPS agreement. It stipulates that members shall notify changes in their sanitary or phytosanitary measures and shall provide inf information on these measures in accordance with the provisions of Annex B which is referenced elsewhere in the handbook. I do want to draw your attention to the language, shall notify and shall provide, which does imply a commitment 
However, where urgent problems of health protection arise or threaten to arise for a member, that member may omit certain steps, provided that they immediately notify other members of the particular regulation and the products covered with a brief indication of the objective and the rationale of the regulation, including the nature of the urgent problem, provide upon request copies of the regulation to other members, and that the member allows other members to make comments in writing, discuss these comments, and takes them into account as necessary. This is language that could be incorporated into other RTA provisions and is particularly notable in light of the current pandemic. The baseline plus option here is for reporting, monitoring, and eliminating non-tariff barriers. This is taken from the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. And it's tailored to the African context, but could be adapted to other RTAs. It notes that the regional economic community shall establish or strengthen NTB monitoring mechanisms responsible for A, tracking and monitoring NTBs affecting trade and updating regional and national plans for their elimination, and B, capacity building and sensitization of stakeholders on the reporting, monitoring, and evaluation tools, including through web-based systems. I do note here that there's also a link through capacity building with the chapter, the module on development. In this case also, the language shows that working closely with other entities, NTBs should be resolved and should be reported as such. This language could be, again, incorporated into other RTAs and adapted as necessary. As always, we end with some relevant sources. I look forward to seeing you in the next session.